We're the two best friends that anybody could have. The two best friends that anybody could have. We're here in Las Vegas, and we're going to show you different filming locations for our favorite comedy movie, The Hangover. That's right. We're also going out to L.A., all over Nevada. We're going to get all these locations that we could possibly get. We love this movie. We can't wait to show you the spots. And we cordially invite you to come along for the adventure. Come along. The movie begins inside this mansion right here in Pasadena, California. They're doing preparations for the upcoming wedding and they're wondering, where are the guys at? Now, Alan's dad is sitting on the couch. He's reading through a magazine. He says, honey, they're in Vegas. They probably lost track of time. You know, those casinos, they don't have any clocks. They don't have any windows. And then he said, maybe they're on a heater. And you don't ever walk away from the table when you're on a heater. To which someone replied, well, you do if you're about to get married. Then Tracy gets a phone call from Phil. Phil said that they can't find Doug. She said, what? We're supposed to get married in five hours. He said, sorry, not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. The only real difference we noticed in how the mansion looked in the movie versus now is that the ivy has been removed. Phil used to work at this school right here. He scammed children out of their money. Doug pulled up with Alan in the passenger seat right here and then alan's like do you have to park so close dog asks why and he goes because i'm not supposed to be within 200 feet of a school or chuck e cheese <laughs> now why was he not allowed to be within 200 feet of a school or a chuck e cheese i don't remember them explaining in the movie why that was if you know tell us in the comment section below let's take a look at how things look now for one thing right over here you see there's no more lamp post here and no benches there was a lamp post and benches on both sides here. But a lot else still looks the exact same. Matter of fact, the doors that he would have walked through and students were walking through right here look the same. And those lights right there and over there are also still in place. The school is called Daniel Webster Elementary. In the movie, it's called Harrison Elementary. When the boys arrive in Las Vegas, they head straight to the Caesars Palace they pull in and park in this area right here, then head into the lobby. This fountain is shown as they head in. Then of course, some of the best lines of the movie take place in front of this painting. It's where Alan said, you probably get this a lot. Isn't this the real Caesar's palace? Did Caesar live here? And he also asked, do you know if the hotel is pager friendly? I'm not getting a SIG on my beeper. After waking up the next morning, the guys, minus Doug, step out here to pick up their car. They notice a mattress hanging from the statue on the roof. Although it looks like an actual statue that is here at the Caesars Palace, this one was added in just for the movie. The guys ask for their car at the bell desk, and when it arrives, the valet says, Here's your car, officers, and of course the police car is parked here for them to pick up. Right here is where Chow and his gang pull up in the SUV and slams into the car. It would have happened right here where we're standing. Boom! Ooh, boom to your face. <laughs> I just slammed into Heather in the exact spot where the car accident took place. You can see the liquor's cocktail sign right back here. This is from Atomic Liquors. This was the this is the oldest freestanding bar in all of Las Vegas. They were the first place to ever get a liquor license in Las Vegas. The interesting thing here is people used to stand on the roof and watch atomic bombs being tested off in the distance. It was the best place to watch that test being done. That's why they changed the name to Atomic Liquors back in the 1950s. The sign with the woman on it that fell into the guy's car was added in for the movie. We're now at the location of the best little chapel. Right there, doesn't look like it, does it? That's because they put a fake front on this building. This is actually the hostel cat. They put a fake front. They had a steeple going up the air right there. They had beautiful shrubbery and different things set up all around here to be the entranceway of the best little chapel. Then over here, where the hostel cat sign is, they covered that up with the best little chapel sign. That means right in here is where that bus waiting bench would have been. The guys went inside the wedding chapel where they found out Stu had gotten married the night before. When they left, they were shot at here in the parking lot and they backed out right into the bus stop that had been set up here for the movie. Welcome everybody to the Wild Wild West. The Wild Wild West. 
This is a casino and a hotel here. It's actually a day's in, but I guess the casino is called the Wild Wild West. This is where Jade was staying in the movie. She was at 825. That was her room number. The boys would have walked right through here. You could see some of that, the skyline, off in the distance of the buildings. They came right there. You also could see the pool, which we're gonna get up to in just a second. Now in this room, what happened in some, let's show the room first, right here. 825, what happened in here? While they were trying to figure out where Doug was, Stu looked closely at Jade's hand and he spit out his drink that he was drinking because he noticed that she was wearing his grandmother's ring from the Holocaust. That's right, and Alan says, they gave out rings in the Holocaust, which actually that line was made up on the spot by Zach. Now let's take a look at that pool area we were talking about. Phil was driving with Sue and Alan in the car. They were talking about how they found some random things and then they heard some noises like, oh my goodness, Doug, he's in the trunk. Yeah, they found a size six shoe. They're like, nobody wears a size six shoe. They come through here, they start swerving back and forth across the road and you clearly see MGM Grand in the background plus these jet fuel tanks right here as they come down this road. They hurry up, I'll jump out of the car, go to the trunk, and then they pop it open, and there's Chow in his birthday suit with the crowbar. He says, I know where Doug's at, and you're not getting him back until I get my money. And if I don't get my money, he's going to die. All right, now it's time to head out to the desert. We're about 30 minutes away from Las Vegas. This is where Doug was supposed to be traded off for some money with Chow and his gang. However, they had the wrong Doug. He wasn't even the right one. Yeah, the wrong guy showed up here in the desert. Now, this marking here looks familiar, this area with the little brush, and then you can clearly see the mountains and the way they curved down. That's why we think this was the exact spot where the exchange took place. Now we're back at where we started, at the mansion in Pasadena, California. This is where the wedding between Doug and Tracy takes place at the closeout to the movie. Speaking of closing out, Y'all be sure to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell so you can come along with us on future adventures. Come along.